All right, so let's talk briefly about primates, which is the mammalian order that humans are part of. There's really three um, main groups that we split primates into. One group is called the prosimians, which include the lemurs and the tarsiers, um, the monkey group, and then the ape group. So we're looking at small, small arboreal animals, uh, mammals, meaning the ones that live in trees. About 65 million years ago, we start to see primates. Um, they're pretty similar to the prosimians that we see today. Um, they're, they're around when dinosaurs um, are still present, not humans. These are not hominins, but they are um, primate groups. So here's some special characteristics, shared derived characters, or synapomorphies of primates. We see um, they have very um, uh, highly functional hands. So they have um, very good at grasping. They have a lot of nerve endings in their hands and feet. So they're very good for manipulating objects. Um, we also see flat nails instead of curved nails like other animals have. Um, large brains compared to their body size and short jaws. They also have a, um, these really flexible hip and shoulder joints. Um, for many of the primates, this is going to be very um, useful for climbing, for swinging from tree to tree, um, that kind of behavior. The short snout, which you can see here, so unlike, you know, like a dog, you see that um, primates generally have a short snout, and then these forward pointing eyes, so that's a, a special characteristic there, which uh, when you have eyes pointing forward, you can get binocular vision, which gives you much better 3D depth perception. So when these um, primates are, um, are navigating their way through forests, it's going to be a lot easier because they have this three-dimensional, um, the forward-facing eyes and three-dimensional um, depth perception. And you also see complex social behavior and parental care, not completely unique to primates, but um, in all primate groups, uh, or many primate groups, you have this kind of thing going on. So this is an example of a loris. It's in the prosimian group. You can see it's quite small and it lives in trees. And look at those grasping hands. So here are the, the, um, the prosimians, like I said, lemurs, lorises, and um, patos, or bush babies, the tarsiers, and then the anthropoids, which includes both monkeys and apes. And the thing that monkeys and the anthropoids, the monkeys and apes have that's different than the other two groups, they have an op opposable thumb, which means like your thumb, you can touch all four of your other fingers with the thumb. So groups like the lemurs, so here are two different types of lemurs, the shifaka, um, there's two different types of those. They don't, um, they can't touch all their fingers with their thumb, and the tarsiers either, um, but the anthropoids can. So here we see a general um, primate phylogeny. There's your um, prosimians, and then your tarsiers, and then here are the anthropoids, and there are a number of species in, um, or different groups, you know, in those other two groups. Um, but we have the monkeys, and you can see monkeys are not monophyletic. Um, the New World monkeys branched off first, and then the Old World monkeys. Um, but the Old World monkeys are more closely related to apes, so gibbons onward, those are all apes. And so, actually, Old World monkeys are not as closely related to New World monkeys. But we still use that term for um, non-ape anthropoids. Then we see the gibbons, the orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and bonobos, and then humans. So you can tell humans are most closely related to chimpanzees and bonobos, and least closely related in this phylogeny to the lemurs, lorises, and bush babies. Bush babies the same thing as the patos. So the monkeys, um, there's two main types, those old world, old world monkeys and new world monkeys. So the old world, those are the ones that live in Africa and Asia. Um, they do not have a prehensile tail, so this is an example, the macaque is an example of an old world monkey. So you see the little tail here, it's not a grasping tail. They have downward facing nostrils, and um, they probably evolved first. Then the New World monkeys are the ones that live in South and Central America. You can see they have sideways open nostrils. And um, they have prehensile tails, which means the tail, like the spider monkey, the tail can grip and almost act as a fifth arm, which the Old World monkeys don't have that ability in general. Anthropoids also include apes, and here's the listing of those we saw on the tree already. Um, apes characteristics, their derived characters, they don't have a tail at all. Um, they uh, have relatively long arms compared to their legs. Humans are a little bit differently proportioned, but most apes are like that. Um, 
even more so than the, the primates in general, they're going to have a larger brain with respect to size and flexible behavior. So apes, a lot of ape groups have very um, complex social um, groups and interactions. So we only see apes besides humans, which live everywhere, but um, apes living in Africa and Southeast Asia. We don't have apes in the um, Americas or in Australia. And um, the gorillas, chimpanzees are the ones with the most social organization. So here are some examples. Gibbons, let's see. Gibbons are really good at, um, they live completely in the trees. They're very, very good at brachiating, which means swinging from tree to tree. Um, they remind me of uh, free runners. Um, park, uh, yeah, the free runners where they can just swing and jump and, and they're very, very mobile. They're monogamous, which um, not all ape groups or are, uh, and they um, are relatively small compared to the other apes. Orangutans are solitary. They don't have um, strong, complex social structures. Uh, they live both in the trees and the forest floor, and they're pretty reserved as far as apes go. Then we have gorillas. They're very large. They live completely on the ground, not in trees. Um, they do build nests on the ground, um, and that's where they will reside. And um, you can see they take care of their young. They have strong social structure in their communities, and a lot of them are actually really endangered because of poaching as well as encroachment on their land, people just um, moving further and further into the territory they live in. Chimpanzees are the them and the bonobos are most the most closely related to humans. They share 99% of their genes. Of course, obviously the 1% of the genes that is different uh, is important. It makes us very different than chimpanzees in a lot of ways. And um, remember they have a common ancestor with humans. So chimpanzees and humans are not, do not arise from each other. So here's a chimpanzee using tools. So they're good at tool use. Humans are not the only ones to use tools. Many, many hominins as well as these chimpanzee groups and such use tools. So if we look at hominin evolution, hominins are um, human ancestors. So that's the homo group and the ancestral or relative groups of those. When we look at humans, um, things that are different from the other apes we just talked about, they are bipedal, meaning humans walk on two legs. Um, some of the other organisms can get on two, or some of the or other apes can walk on two legs at times, but mostly they're down on fours. Humans also have larger brains. They have symbolic thought, artistic expression, culture development. Um, they use complex tools. You know, we have the ability to think about our thinking ability and understanding ourselves, which other organisms don't do that. Um, we also have very much smaller jaw muscles. And there's one hypothesis out there that um, the, small, the smaller jaw muscles actually allows for a bigger brain development. So if your skull is mostly jaw muscle attachment area, you don't have a lot of room for brain, but once you take that pressure off the skull and can be larger because this the skull doesn't have to have these huge muscles attached. Can't chew as well, but you have more capacity for brain. Humans also have a much shorter digestive tract than a lot of the other apes. So even though our genes are identical, um, a lot of the regulatory regions, which are not genes, but other parts of the DNA, you know, that's probably what's really the difference between chimps and humans, and that's um, when genes are turned off and on and how much they're turned off and on and where they're expressed, all that changes and that changes the end outcome of what kind of organism you get. So um, people that study paleoanthropology are ones that are studying um, origins of humans and human evolution. Um, we have about 20 species of extinct hominins now. The only hominin left is um, the human line, Homo sapiens species specifically. And we have thousands and thousands of hominin fossils. So, you know, we understand our lineage based off of a lot of evidence. New stuff is coming up all the time. So that means that we shift um, some of our hypotheses and understanding of, of human relatives, which is totally expected and actually rather exciting to be able to do that. Um, so this is a really hot field um, of research and lots of stuff is going on with it. 
So here's an example of some hominin species. You can see they're not all homo genus. That's the one Homo sapiens is in. But we have Australopithecus or Australopithecus. We have Artipithecus or Artipithecus. Um, and so those are some really important ones. Uh, and then all these different types of the, the Homo genus, including Homo sapiens. You can see that a number of them have overlapped living at the same time. So like this um, Paranthropus boisei lived at the same time as the Homo ergaster and the Neanderthals. And some of that also overlaps with the Paranthropus robustus and the Homo habilis. And so you see a lot of hominin species all existing together. So what this means is that each species didn't give rise to the next one. This is a big branching um, tree of the different groups existing and then some going extinct and then other ones you know, giving rise to different species. So we don't completely understand the branching of this um, at all, really. Uh, we have some ideas, but that's why it's shown as like um, how long they've been around in the little window of time that they existed versus a, a phylogenetic tree. You can see Homo sapiens have been around for a very short period of time ten, compared to um, the long periods of time a lot of these other organisms survive. So even though like Homo erectus doesn't exist anymore, I mean, it was around for millions of years whereas Homo sapiens has only been around for something like 200,000 years. Um, so something to note here is the Arty fossil, um, Artipithecus, Artipithecus ramidus, so they call her Arty. And um, one of the important things that came out of understanding the Arty fossil is that um, she was bipedal, but still had a small brain and still lived in the forest. So when we find fossils like this, sometimes they change our hypotheses about how and when the different characteristics of humans arose. So for a while it was thought that maybe the brain formed first, the big brain, and then people um, or hominins started to walk upright. But what a lot of fossils have shown us now is that's not true, that they were walking upright long before the brain expanded in size. We also thought for a while that the savanna was where the bipedalism, walking on two feet, originated. But actually, Artie shows us that she's bipedal and she lives in the forest. And she's older than many of the other fossils, the bipedal fossils. So just to clarify some misconceptions, so hominins and chimpanzees are not equivalent. So hominins are, are chimpanzees were doing their own thing. Like that line that's the modern day chimp was you know, um, chimp ancestors, and it was down along its own little pathway. The hominins were on its other pathway. And they were branching, turning into different species. Some of them were going extinct. Eventually, Homo sapiens arose, um, and it's on its own branch. So chimpanzees didn't turn into humans. It's a common ancestor that then diverged into two groups, the chimp group and the hominin group. Also, that the Homo sapiens isn't... Um, like every species, like I mentioned, it's not like one homo species turns into the next, turns into the next, and eventually at the top of that, the last one is homo sapiens. Um, it's much more of a branching pattern, and uh, the extinction events are not, um, sometimes it's just a completely dead-end line. It doesn't give rise to any other homo groups or hominin groups, and so it's much more complicated than just like, ta-da, here's humans. Um, it's... Uh, it's not going towards Homo sapiens, it just happens to be the last one that's, that's uh, existing. And we are very good as a species about adapting to environments, and, and uh, not adapting as in evolutionarily, but adapting as in changing our technology and behavior, which of course is encoded um, to a large degree by genetics, our ability to do that, to think that way, and to process and to come up with problem solving. Um, but, but that kind of social adaptation is... Um, something that Homo sapiens do very well. So this is some ways that you would be able to see bipedalism. So um, there's footprints. Um, they're very old, and we um, can tell that it's bipedal. So this was a hominin walking bipedally. Um, then uh, also when you find skulls, you can tell if it's a bipedal organism or a um, or hominin or not, by where the spinal cord comes out of the skull. So this is a chimpanzee. So if you see the opening in the back, and that means the spinal cord is coming out this way, um, which means that it's uh, four-legged for the most part. Whereas the hominin group and, and bipedal 
um, species, you'll see that the spinal, col spinal column, the vertebrae, come out um, straight from the bottom, which uh, orients the head correctly when they are on two feet. So here are some examples of brain size and um, compared to volume or the body size. And so you see Homo sapiens is up there. The Neanderthals, though, had actually a bigger um, uh, brain compared to their body size. But we don't think their groups were as good at um, uh, maybe tool use. They used tools for sure. Many, many of these groups did. But um, the Homo sapiens seem to be better at um, changing with the environment more rapidly than uh, as, a, as a group, you know, technology-wise, than the Neanderthals were. So this is the uh, range of the Neanderthals. They were not humans, but we think that they actually probably interbred with humans, Homo sapien humans, um, because we see some examples of Neanderthal DNA, chunks of that in um, humans today actually have a Neanderthal de genome that's been sequenced. And um, so you'd see that in people of European, maybe Asian ancestry, um, but the, the European areas where most of the Neanderthals lived, so many people with European ancestry, um, they'll be the ones that had Neanderthal in them as well. And so this shows you how um, humans moved. So. Homo sapiens originated 200,000 years ago, approximately, in Africa. So um, actually right probably in this area here near Ethiopia and um, Eastern Africa. And um, we think about 100,000 um, years ago, before present, that's what BP is, before the present time, um, they started migrating in little groups out um, into other parts of Africa for a long, you know, for quite some period of time. Those groups got separated and started you know, becoming unique. And then a small group probably came um, either, don't know for sure that I know, but they, they moved out of Africa into um, what is now the Middle East, and also some ended up in uh, Asia, eventually down to Australia, and eventually to Europe, and then finally to North America, and finally South America. So um, the Americas didn't have um, Homo sapiens on them for a long time compared to the rest of um, particularly Africa, but also Asia and Europe. So you should watch the 23andMe videos about um, human origins and the migration patterns of early humans and how um, that worked. They'll talk in more detail about the movement patterns and how we think that those things might have occurred. But you can see here that um, Homo sapiens has an A, has not been around that long, and B, hasn't been even in these places that long, so 35,000 years um, prior to present day uh, in geologic time, or even 15,000, is, um, is not very long. But we have made a lot of changes, obviously, changed the landscape more than any other organism that's ever existed, to our knowledge. And um, so this is a good thing and a bad thing, and that's one of the reasons why you know, we're having such an impact on the overall Earth compared to some other groups because of our technology and our big brains. Uh, some of it's really great and some of it's pretty destructive. And so, you know, I think as thinking organisms, we need to be cognizant of our impact overall because we are very different in our ability to impact the entire Earth.